Hey everybody, welcome to episode four of Dynamic Disc TV. We're glad to have you here. In this uh, episode, we're gonna have uh, uh, several people talk about their different grips because we get a lot of questions on the Disc Golf Fancy Man about grip and we thought, you know what, instead of breaking it down into just one or two grips, we thought we'd see what everybody else likes to do as far as grips for driving and putting. We also get catch up with Chris uh, Eads and Andrew Myers. They're from Team Dynamic Discs. They came by the distribution center, so I stopped them and asked them a few questions about what they like to do in their off season. And then Eric, talk about what you, you go over as far as practicing your putting. Well, it's been really cold outside, at least around here in Kansas. So a lot of, uh, you know, not being able to get out to the course and actually practice outside. So I break down some putting stations and how I do my putting routine in the off season when it's really cold out. For the segment of is this disc right for you, we actually changed it up a little bit. We're going to call it is this plastic for you. Because of the winter months and the colder weather, uh, we have a new plastic line from Dynamic Discs, Fluid, and then of course Latitude 64 has Frost, and then Westside Discs has Elasto. So Dixon kind of breaks it down for us and tells us some of the features and benefits of having this newer plastic. Then mm. finally, I break down the Cadet bag from Dynamic Discs. So to start out, let's talk about some grips. Uh, when it comes to driving, I have two different grips I use. Um, one that pretty much everyone knows is the power grip, where all my fingers are tucked into the rim of the disc. Um, and then I have a modified grip. Um, it's, I put my, instead of the power grip where it's all on the rim, I'll just scoop my fingers out onto the flight plate. It's pretty much the same grip as a power grip, but just move your fingers out just a little bit onto that flight plate. This grip gives me control and it also gives me power. When it comes to putting, I use a fan grip, which most of you know as. Um, this is how my fan grip looks like. The reason why I use the fan grip when I'm putting is because instead of a driver, when you're using the power grip, you're actually ripping it out of your hand. Um, with this, when I have the fan grip, I'm actually just releasing it, um, uh, doing my own work with the disc instead of having it ripped out of my hand. All right, for drives, I like to use the power grip. I use this grip because I like to put a lot of snap on my disc. So I feel like this kind of grip uh, comes out of my hand nice and clean, which is great when you're just trying to hit a good line. For putting, I like to use more of a modified fan grip. So fingers kind of spread out a little bit, one finger on the rim, and then my thumb a little farther in on the flight plate. Uh, I like this for any kind of putt or any kind of touch shot, just because it has better control and when you don't need as much power. Alrighty, uh, for my drives, what I like to do is I have a power grip. It's slightly modified with my third finger being on top of my fourth finger, but it's a pretty traditional power grip. Uh, on the top, I have my thumb that is uh, pretty close to the edge. I know a lot of people like to have theirs out towards the middle, uh, but I keep mine pretty much right over the top of where the rim meets the flight plate. Uh, and that's, that's what I do for all of my drives. For my mid-range game, I actually throw almost exactly the same grip, uh, with the theory for me being the less moving parts, the better. Um, if I don't have to think about my grip when I'm changing from a uh, uh, power driver to a mid-range shot, uh, for me, that's a good thing, and that's what I want to do. I do change my grip when it goes to a putt. I use a, uh, a fan grip. Um, uh, with my first finger being slightly on the rim, uh, I know some people like to do all four fingers on. I, I have it on the side, not quite wrapped all the way around like some other folks do. Um, it's kind of right there. Uh, it's, I, I do a spin putt, and so I use this to be able to, um, uh, to get full extension and then to have it kind of roll off all of my fingers at the same time. The grip I use for drives and mid-ranges is kind of a modified power fan grip, also known as a stacked grip. I like to have all of my fingers stacked together with my fingertips on the flight plate of the disc. My index finger where it bends is, is right around the rim of the disc and that is the last place it comes off. Uh, my thumb on the top is right where the flight plate meets the rim and I add pressure from there. Putting is pretty close to the same. I don't like to change up my grip too much, but it is more of a fan grip. It's not all the way out, but it is more of a fan than a power grip. And my index finger is curled around just like on my drives. And the reason I use this grip is for comfortability. I feel like I get the most power from my drives and the most accurate shots using both the stacked, the modified power and fan grip.
Okay, well, I'm here with for Dynamic Dish TV, and I was out here at the warehouse here at Dynamic Distribution, and I ran into two Team Dynamic Dish players, Chris Eads and Andrew Meyer. How are you guys doing today? We're doing pretty good. We're uh, excited to be here. Nice. So are you doing a little shopping, I guess, for the holidays, maybe? Yeah, my family plays and his brother plays, so we're getting some last-minute gifts. Nice. Anything in particular that kind of caught your eye while you're here at the warehouse? Well, we wanted to get some of the new frost and fluid plastic for them to try out. Yeah, wow. nice. Especially during the cold weather. Have you guys been able to throw any of the new frost and fluid? Yeah, we've been really impressed by the stability of it and how great it feels in some of the cold weather that we've been able to play in the last couple of weeks. Cool. So what do you guys do come winter? Now, where are you guys from, though? Where do you guys play at? Uh, we live in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Okay. Um, it's about six and a half hours from here. <laughs> Okay, so you get cold weather, right, over in uh, Arkansas? Yeah. So what do you guys do for, like, uh, practicing during the winter and stuff like that? Well, uh, we have a basket that we put in the house, and we have about a 30-foot range from where we can putt from to where the basket is. Yeah. Uh, so in those rainy days and the really, really cold days that we don't want to play, we just putt inside the house a lot. Mm -hmm. Nice. What about you, Andrew? What do you kind of do for the winter? Uh, a lot of the times I just bundle and bear it and go out in the cold. <laughs> <laughs> nice. A lot of hand warmers. Yeah. So can, tell us a little bit about your 2014 touring season for the for the both of you. How did it go? What were some highs, some lows of the 2014? Uh, I'd say some of the highs. Uh, my rating was able to jump from about 998 to 1,000. I've ended the year at 1,009. Nice. Uh, so that was one of my goals is to really get up there in the close to 1010. 1010 was a goal, and I've pretty close to it. Uh, I think I won six or seven B tiers this year and then had a really good battle in that A tier against Paul McBeth. So oh, that yeah. was a really fun event. Um, so I think that was some of my highs. Uh, I cashed at every single event I played in this year. So nice. I was pretty happy about What's that. What's something that if you could go back and change, what would it be? Uh, I would say it was that that that, that A tier <laughs> loss, uh, that, that last upshot. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think it, it's a learning experience yeah. as – um, I think we played smart this year. We played the events that we wanted to play. Uh, and s some of the ones, we, we skipped out on some of the ones that were, um, that didn't make sense in our schedules. So, yeah. what about you, Andrew? Well, uh, my first A tier ever was GBO last year. Okay. And I'm looking forward to it again this year. But then uh, a few months later, I was able to win my first A tier, Four nice. States Open. So, that was a pretty exciting moment for me to win an A tier. Nice. So, Hopefully next year we'll get to some NTs and everything. So. Well, I know the 2015 GBO is going to be NT, so yeah. that's going to be good. We already signed up for that, so yeah, nice. uh, it's getting close. Nice. Now, you mentioned earlier, you said something about when you guys were touring, you, you were smart about what tournaments you played. For some of the people that are thinking about going out and touring, what do you what do you mean by you were smart by which tournament you picked? Uh, we picked. Uh, tournaments we'd either played before or heard good things about okay. uh, events that were ran well by good quality tournament directors I think that's important right. um, we also chose events that you know there's times if we go seven or eight hours away that means we have to get seven or, and we, we're still working people so we sure. still have to work on Mondays so you know it's hard for us to go to some of those four round events that where we have to drive seven or eight hours back and not get home till two or three in the morning and wow. still have to work next day so there's a few of those ones that we didn't really go to there's a few we skipped uh, because we wanted to go to such things like the AT&T experience this right. year. Uh, so we were kind of selective on the events and something we really wanted to focus on this year was to help both my rating get a little bit higher was to play less rounds and smarter rounds. So where I was playing about 26 events a year, I probably played 16 events this year. So we oh, cut wow. it down almost in half. So it's not like it did help you with your rating because you said your rating was the best. It it's did because it allows good rounds to actually affect your rating. But then at the same time, it also bad rounds affect your rating even more than it used to. Interesting. So. And what about you, Andrew? How do you pick tournaments to go to? Uh, a lot of mine is the weather. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to avoid the really cold and the rain. I really like to avoid the rain. I have a lot of problems with slipping on the tee pads when they're wet. So oh, yeah. I try to avoid that altogether if I can. And then I like to look at the courses that I'm going to be playing and kind of decide if it's my kind of course. I'm, I'm better. I have a lot of length in my drive, so mm -hmm. I'm better on longer courses against my competition. So I like to go to those kinds of tournaments. Nice. Now, what do you guys like to do when you're not playing disc golf? Well, we still travel a lot. I work on the road uh, doing sales, so we travel a lot still getting to do those kind of things. Um, but we spend a lot of time at home uh, working with our local clubs and stuff like that. Uh, but disc golf is a big part of our lives, so yeah. it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a number one hobby for sure. 
And what about you? When, when, when there's no tournament and no nothing to do with, about disc golf, Andrea, what do you like to do to maybe unwind or have a good time? I read a lot, a oh, lot really? of books, yeah. Anytime we're traveling, I'm reading while he's driving. Oh, so man. I like to do that. And we watch a lot of like Netflix series and stuff when it's bad weather and stuff like that. It's little, we do puzzles too. What kind of books, like nonfiction or fiction books? I prefer fiction and uh, I like a lot of sci-fi. So. so are you team Edward or team... <laughs> 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 not uh, a Twilight, not a Twilight fan. No, okay, that's not fine. A I'm not either. Teen romance kind okay. of girl. So I understand. That's good though. That's good though. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, one of the things I wanted to try new with the, the interviews is a speed round. So some of these questions we want to see. So they're just I want to just kind of whatever the first comes to your mind. Okay. <laughs> so we'll start with you, Andrew. Okay. Uh, well, actually, this might be a good one for Chris. Let's see, Chris, because I think mm-hmm. that. Okay, you ready? What was the most expensive disc golf related item you've ever? purchased a basket a basket a, a disc craft basket how much was it really expensive or um 375 dollars oh, okay so nothing like a collector's item or anything like uh, that i've bought a few of the 2001 ce rocks but i've gotten some pretty good deals on them i mean oh, okay. i didn't the most expensive disc i've purchased would probably be close to 200 oh wow what so, disc was that uh that was a 2001 ce rock do you still have it i do I oh. do still have it. Right, what are you gonna do? You're just gonna hang it on the wall? It's or? still it's still collected. Uh, yeah. <laughs> for, for the right for the right for the right price, I'd probably get rid of it. Nice. Uh, but the most expensive disc I've ever sold was a first run Star Destroyer that uh-huh. I I don't even know what I paid for it uh, twenty dollars and I sold it uh, earlier this year for two hundred and twenty five dollars. That's a nice little profit. Yeah, I wasn't gonna sell it until they got that number came out and I couldn't say no. It's nice. one of those can't. Have say you no bought numbers. anything expensive as far as disc golf stuff? No. Pretty besides, ordinary. Besides my clothes, yeah. I'm very frugal. Oh, okay, cool. All right, so okay, so let's go with you on this one, Andrea. Have you ever cried at a movie? Yes, what, yes, I have. What movie would that be? A lot of them. A all, lot. The, all the sad ones. <laughs> all the sad ones. <laughs> okay, cool. And some tw- of the, tw- yeah. Twilight. Shoot. Twilight. Yeah. Right. All right. Uh, let's see. For the both of you, what's your biggest disc golf flu- influence? Like, who has been the most influence on you for disc golf? Uh, going deep here now. Yeah. <laughs> well, the one who taught me um, was a, a local guy back at home, and I think that was a big influence on me just because uh, he really kind of showed technique uh, and those kind of things. So it was just a local pastor at home that re- oh. who got me into the sport yeah. 13, 14 years ago. So wow. I think that was the biggest influence on me is just to keep me playing because you know, at the beginning, I didn't always want to play and stuff like that, but we'd always go out and play together. So, nice. what about you, Andrew? Uh, mine would have to be my parents. They started me playing and I hated it, and they made me keep going, and then eventually I loved it. And uh, they run some tournaments now, and they really they show that disc golf's about giving back. It's not about making a profit. It's, yeah. You know, it's about everybody having a great time and being competitive and not trying to take away from the players at their tournaments. And that's really important to me. I think it's a good value. Nice. Okay, so next one is, uh, what's a must-watch TV show? Right now we're watching uh, HBO's Newsroom. Oh, I haven't seen that. Is that pretty yeah, good? It's it's amazing. It's really good. If yeah. we're, we're not political people. Yeah. Uh, we just have never... It's just not us. But It's made us uh, political people. But oh, it, really? <laughs> it, it, we've actually learned a lot of things about the past three or four years and some of the big situations that have mm-hmm. happened it's about in the, how current events should have been reported really not how they were used as propaganda or fear programs you know nice all right let's see uh favorite pizza topping i don't like anything on my pizza she's, she's cheese, like cheese pizza yeah. cheese pizza kind of girl <laughs> what about you um i like roasted chicken uh i'm, I'm like alfredo sauce on my Ooh, pizza nice, so yes. and i like stuffed crust pizza a lot too oh, but she doesn't crust. like it so i have to I have to eat the whole thing myself, and it's really unfortunate. That'll get you in trouble. Have you seen the new bacon cheese stuffed crust? I have. That I have not tried it yet. My wife let me know that that thing has almost a thousand calories per slice. Oh my goodness! (laughs) So okay, so stay. Okay, so okay, uh, cake or pie? I'm a cake guy. I, I like cake. I like yellow cake with chocolate frosting. If I could have any dessert, it'd be that every day. I like both. We go to a place that has free pie Tuesday, so Ooh. I've had yeah. a lot of Every pie. Tuesday. 
Is it mm-hmm. good pie? Yeah, it, it's they, really good pie. They have all kinds. They have a whole bakery and they nice. have a ton of French fresh pies. Yeah, it's delicious. Nice. Okay, Star Wars or Star Trek? Oh, I don't know. I I grew up on Star Trek with my dad, but I also love Star Wars. Uh, I'm interested to see the new Star Wars yeah. uh, movies that are coming out, but. Uh, the new Star Trek movies have definitely made me like Star Trek more re- as of recently. The new uh, movies definitely. are really good. Chris okay, la- good. last one. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Uh, telekinesis. Really? Yeah, absolutely. That's where you can like read people's minds, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, that would be anyway. scary. I thought women could do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was yeah. women want men to be able to read women's minds. Yeah, yes. <laughs> no one can read our mind. I'll take that superpower, please. <laughs> I would like to know what I'm supposed to say in front of a woman. There you go. I want that one too. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to do this interview with us. We're out here today to answer the question, is this disc right for you? And I think we've got a product that's right up your line. Recently, Dynamic Disc, Latitude 64, and West Side Disc have come out with a line of plastic that is much more flexible. Now, In the Dynamic Disc lineup, it's called Fluid Plastic. In the Latitude 64, it's called Frost. And in West Side, it's called Elasto. So why might this disc be right for you? Number one, some people really prefer a grippy plastic. Uh, it's just a it's just a preference it's a feel thing but if that's you you can really dig down on this plastic you can get your thumb down into the flight plate even press it up against the rim if that's how hard you want to squeeze i know people that like to really uh, manhandle their discs before they throw this is going to be perfect and there's going to be no ill effects on the flight path number two in the uh, in the hot months this disc is going to be very flexible when it hits trees it's going to absorb that energy you're not going to see these giant fly-offs and ricochets off of trees But maybe the most important thing, uh, or or one of the most important things, at least in my opinion, about this disc, and that's why we're out here today. As you can tell by my attire, it's pretty cold outside. To prove to you how cold it is outside right now, we are at Jones Park in Emporia, Kansas right now. It is 10 degrees with a wind chill of minus 10 degrees. Uh, We're in a 22 mile an hour north wind right now. As you can see, we're not doing any Photoshop tricks here. That's a frozen pond in the background. This is hole number 12 east uh, of the east course at at Jones Park. So if you're familiar with it, you know how big this body of water is. It is frozen solid. So here's what we want to do today. I'm going to take uh, one of these fluid discs. I'm going to take just a regular premium plastic disc, and then I'm also going to take a base plastic disc. I'm going to throw them all into a tree, and you're going to see the effects of what that uh, running into that object in the cold weather is going to do. But then I'm going to take this fluid disc and I'm going to throw it on a hole and show you that it still flies fantastic. So let's get to work. Oh, it's bendy. Oh, yeah. As you can see in the base plastic, it does not handle hitting a tree very well. No damage. Okay. All right, so here we are on the tee box. This is that exact same fluid truth that I just chucked into the tree. So now I'm gonna throw it right here to show you that it still flies great. The Cadet Bag is a lightweight and convenient bag from Dynamic Discs, but it has plenty of storage space for you to take out on the disc golf course. Now, who would want to buy the Cadet Bag? Well, you have your beginners who maybe aren't quite ready to invest in a bigger bag. This is something they can start out with. Or as a companion bag for somebody that plays a lot of disc golf and already has a bigger bag, but just wants to be able to grab a few few of their discs to take out on the course, but still have something lightweight they can carry with them. The main compartment holds about 8 to 10 discs and then in the front you have a putter pocket which can hold up to two putters. On the side we have a water bottle holder which can hold up to about a 20 ounce water bottle. The top has a zipper mesh pocket where you can store things like your minis, pencils, cell phones, wallets or even keys. There's a convenient shoulder strap for carrying around on the course. 
The cadet bag from Dynamic Disc comes in five colors. We have fractured red, fractured orange, fractured chartreuse, fractured blue, and fractured pink. And at a price of only $14.99, it's not a bad little bag to get you started if you're just starting out in disc golf and you don't want to get a bigger bag, or if you just need a companion bag so that if you're playing a casual round with friends and you don't feel like taking all your discs, pick up a Dynamic Disc Cadet bag at dynamicdiscs.com. Hey guys, it's that time of year again when it's really cold outside all across the world, frigid temperatures, maybe even some snow on the ground. I'm gonna give you a tip on how to stay on top of your putting game during these long winter months. I like to set up about six stations starting at 15 feet, working back five feet increments up to 40 feet. I like to keep about five putters when I'm practicing and keep the five same molds. So don't have a whole bunch of different molds when you're out there practicing. I also like to keep a stool next to my putters that I can keep them on. So I keep one in my hand at all times. I do this because I like to practice like I like to play in tournament mode. And you wouldn't have a stack of putters when you're out there on the tournament field. As you work your way down each station, challenge yourself by not moving to the next station until you've made all five putts. my sixth and final station here of 40 feet. I don't recommend going much past this point, mainly because putts inside 40 feet are the ones that are most important to work on. I know a lot of people don't have access to a big warehouse like this, but your basement will work great. Your garage will work just fine. I don't really recommend putting inside of a hallway, mainly because you're in a confined space and it won't transition well into an open course. If you don't have access to any of those, Maybe contact the local YMCA or the rec center and see if you can rent space to start a putting league. There you have it guys. Setting up a putting station is a really easy way to work on your putting game during the winter months. All right, everybody, that's it for episode four of Dynamic Disc TV. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Make sure you go out and you like, subscribe, and share. Which, I'm looking at this one, right? Yeah, you're Hi. <laughs> uh, it just sounds funny. Do donuts. Down or some form to market. And then, <laughs> guys, setting up an easy putting game is not how it goes. Hey, everybody, welcome to this episode of the Disc Golf Answer Man. <laughs> you ready? Oh, that hurts so bad. All right. Welcome everybody to episode. <laughs> oh okay. yeah. All right, we're at a sixth and final station at 40 feet. <laughs> In the <laughs> uh, specifically talking about our fluid plastic from Dynamic Disc, the Elasto from Westside, and then of course um, Frost. Frost. I could think of. There you have it, guys. Setting up putting stations is a really easy way. <laughs> no, <I'm really laughs> no, you emphasize the A. So the new plastic, the fluid from Dynamic Disc, Elasto from Westside World. <laughs> <laughs> My beats are icky. Mm. To the square dance rap. <laughs>